everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I've got a guitar to unbox here. I wasn't uh, planning on having a new guitar, but uh, Donner hit me up. I'm like, hey, we've got a new guitar. <laughs> Do you wanna check it out? I've done some uh, affordable board pedals from them in the past, so I figured, you know what, might as well. They've taken care of me. They've supplied what I've requested. Might as well cover their hot new thing, right? Inside we've got a soft case with the guitar in it. A strap. Oh my goodness. A cable that actually looks decent. That's shocking. It's not a Radio Shack style cable. Yeah, that's a decent looking cable right there. I'll have to plug that in and see uh, if it performs. What's the quality of the strap? Now that they got my attention with that cable. It's like a cloth style strap, vinyl ends. I'm pretty sure that's vinyl. It doesn't feel like actual leather. Metal loops on this. I like the cloth. Kind of like a cotton. I'm pretty sure that's a cotton cloth right there. All right, let's check out the guitar. This is gonna be a single cut style thing. Two humbuckers, stop tail bridge. Well, full tunematic style thing. The case, by the way, it's a little padded. I mean, it's, it's a really cheap style gig bag. There's nothing wrong with that. These are, I think, $170 guitars, $180 guitars, something like that. You can already tell there's a fun color under there, right? <laughs> of course I'm gonna choose the loudest, funnest color they have. There she is, or he, I haven't checked. Where are the genitals? I can't find them, I can't find the genitals. I don't know the sex of this guitar. Interesting, there's a string action ruler on the tag here and on the other side of the tag is a chord chart. So the assumption is you need chord charts to learn chords, this is gonna be your first guitar and also, you're ready to do some setup stuff. You need a string action ruler. I feel like those are two opposite ends of the skill spectrum right there, but I appreciate it. Pickups look like they're made out of kind of a cheap plastic. I'm gonna take some pictures while I go. I'm not totally sure how to describe that plastic, but when you see it, it, it gives you an impression of something that's cheap, you know? What does this mean? It has, it has a custom, neck plate here and it says designed by Tennessee. Who is Tennessee? Did they mean in Tennessee? Established 2012. I like the looks. I like the uh, the general vibe of it. I like the uh, the cream binding around the edge. A little bit of bubbles and imperfections in the binding down here at the jack plate. Honestly, not the sort of thing anyone should complain about with a sub $200 guitar. I'm just pointing out little things that I notice. A little bit of flame on this maple bolt-on neck. Kind of a fat feeling neck too, really fills my hand. It's very light compared to this light maple, but there's actually cream binding around the headstock edge too and around the fretboard. Frets feel decent, but not spectacular. Um, probably better than what you'd expect for a sub $200 guitar. Oh, they're gritty though. I could either smooth those out on my own or just let time take care of them. But yeah, those didn't get polished. Those are gritty frets. 
Now I'm gonna plug it in, see how it sounds. I wanna check out this cable. It looks to be like a 10 footer. Does it say on here? 10 foot. I know how to eyeball distances, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> It's tuner time! Ooh, man. That tuner started out feeling really loose. Until it made contact. Ooh. A couple of these tuners felt very bad. Um, if I was going to turn this into a regular player for me, I would be doing a tuner swap on it for sure. It's got that bad feel like... You're turning forward and it's fine, and then you have to turn back and you have to do this huge jump to be making uh, traction on those gears again. Yeah, those are probably the cheapest feeling tuners I've felt on a guitar in a long time. And that's saying a lot. <laughs> uh, that's a little bit of a bummer. All right, let's check out the range of sounds from this thing and see how it plays. This is on the bridge pickup. There's the neck. Let's break in the strings a little bit before I play it too much. All right, let's see if that helped. I'm gonna check the intonation real quick, just to, just because I'm curious. Actually, very very close, very very uh, close to spot on. A couple of them could tweak just a tiny little bit. But it's very rare that I get a guitar new where the intonation is dialed back close. So that's nice. It's a spooky chord that needs some delay or something. the neck pickup it is creamy bridge sounds a little muddy to me though you know me I like a twang throw some dirt at it Again with the Rev G4. Slide a little bit out of tune. A 
little bit of Tube Screamer action. <laughs> setting. I tend to neglect the in-between setting when I'm showing off two humbucker guitars. Neck, bridge, middle. Make sure the pots work. Here's the tone. Volume. The bridge hardware seems to be rock solid. I'm not getting any buzzing or rattling from it. It's kind of mystery crust on the butt end of the uh, stop tail here, but it looks like it scrapes away. Sort of factory glue or something. Let's check out the guts real quick. Just out of curiosity, sometimes there's revealing details in the guts of a guitar like this. Lots of room in here to do whatever you want. Really simple, exactly what I would have expected. Mini pots, you know, basic three-way switch. I mean, no surprises, really. Interesting little spacers here they put in. I'm assuming to bring this up to flush height. I've never seen that before. Little strips of adhesive rubber. Interesting touch. Button it back up. Try to figure out if there's anything else I need to show off about this guitar. What's something obvious that I'm missing here? Something that everybody needs to know about this guitar if they're thinking about purchasing it. I'll look up the actual real price real quick. 160. It's 160 bucks from Amazon. So it's going a little bit higher on it than it is. wild dead spot in this tuner. Can you see that? It just rattles. Like a good third of the turn. It goes in tune and it seems to stay in tune, but man, those are cheap tuners. There is a very low-end centered sound from this guitar. It wants to be thick, it wants to be heavy, it wants to hit a lot of distortion.
All right. Time to ask some big questions and come up with some big answers. This is a $160 guitar. Can I recommend it to anyone? Can I say, yeah, go buy this guitar? It's playable. It's got a very full neck. If you're looking for a cheap guitar that fills your hand, there's something about it. It's like a, like a full D kind of shape. Or maybe just like a fat C, I don't know. It feels chunky, but it's not thick like baseball bat thick. Certainly not a, th a slim neck though. The radius feels pretty flat on it. I wouldn't be surprised if it was somewhere between 12 and 14. The action as it came set up, higher than I prefer at the 12th fret. Of course it can be adjusted. I don't detect any buzzing across the fretboard as it is now. Um, doesn't look like the truss needs to be adjusted at all. The frets kind of gritty, but the normal amount of gritty that I expect for a sub $200 guitar. All the details and the aesthetics are clean. No issues there. Kind of cool looking. Cheap in some places, cheap, cheap, cheap tuners. I would recommend changing those. Uh, I would change at least the bridge pickup on this to meet my own personal taste. It's just kind of muddy, kind of lifeless on the bridge position. Uh, warm and dark on the neck. Um, I don't get fussy about neck pickups typically, <laughs> but I would certainly be changing out that bridge pickup um, if I was to have this in regular rotation in my quiver of guitars. I, I think I would have been stoked on this guitar as a new player in my teens. For 160 bucks, I think it's just fine for anyone getting started. You could certainly learn to play on this guitar. I don't think there's anything about it that's gonna impede you from learning to play guitar. Um, the tuners are jumpy, which isn't fun, but it did go into tune. It came intonated just fine too at the 12th fret. It, you could play this. You could learn to play guitar on this. As far as everyone else, if you're curious about it just for the looks and diving into a hobby thing for the more experienced guitarist, sure, go for it, I guess. It's attractive. I don't hate the headstock shape on it. You could get creative with this and, and do uh, funky upgrades and experiment with stuff. Bolt-on neck means that uh, you could get crazy refinishing the body if you wanted to, you could have a project starter here. And I think you could dial in this guitar to be a fairly decent, giggable guitar with some work. What do you guys think? 160 bucks? Are you curious at that price point? If you were shopping with 160 bucks, would this be on your list? I feel like if I was gonna go 160 bucks on a new guitar, I'd probably get another Squire Bolt Mustang, honestly. I just love that guitar so much, that format so much. Um, I think this is totally playable. There's a couple things that need to be upgraded that I've already gone over. But that could be said for any, you know, sub $200 guitar. I do think this far outshines the Epiphone SL that I had by miles. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you think down below. Do you think that this is an attractive guitar? Are you interested in it? What would you buy if you had 160 bucks and you wanted a guitar? Looking forward to reading all those comments. So anyways, thanks for watching. <laughs> Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon and uh, you know, stay grounded. Bye everybody.